Hello everyone, in this video we're going to test a USB data recovery myth. Can you swap the memory chip from one USB stick and put it on another one to get your data back? Let's investigate. For this experiment I have purchased two units from six popular brands. The idea is, if your USB malfunctions, can you swap the memory chip to an identical USB for data recovery? I'll place this one sample photo and also this one sample video file on all six USB sticks. Now that we've saved one sample photo and one sample video to each one of these USB flash drives, it's time to start to disassemble them so we can do the chip swap. So here's how to open the sand disk. We just need to pry inside this little gap here and separate both sides. Then you need to slide it outside of this USB connector. Nice and gentle, we don't want to break the inside. There's the inside, and then to get this out, there's a little clip on both sides of this tab here. So you just have to push it out on one side. And it should fall out the other. And there's our memory chip we're going to swap. To open one of these, they're usually the same if they've got one of these little metal pieces. I use pop, pop them out off its little axis there. There's one side done. There we go. Now there's the little mechanism that gives us that little swivel action. It's broken from inside the metal, I don't know. Once you get that off, oh yeah, it's just glued on each side. Usually, I like to go into the connector here and just pop them. Just be very careful. There we go, we're in. We've got a little memory chip in there as well. To open this style of USB stick, you need to pop the end off. Just get under there, pop the back off. And if you push that out and then push back, the USB will slide through. To open one of these Kingstons, all you need to do is just get in the back here, push down, get under a little bit, and it pops out. Next is the PNY. Same thing, it's got a nice little swivel action. Feels nice, feels reasonably good quality. These swivels are always the same, just pop them off these little axis points and they pop out. Same thing, get a nice little flat pry tool, get them in there. Just start to pop around the joints. There we go. There's our little memory chip we're going to swap. With these MTEC ones, we need to get a little screwdriver into the side here and try and pry down this out. Here's our two SanDisk USB flash drives. You can see SanDisk labeled branded uh, NAND flash chip. This is a TSOP48, thin small outline package with 48 pins, so 24 on this side, 24 on this side. They can only be orientated one way, which is what the little circles represent. And the SanDisk also uses its own little SanDisk microcontroller. So this is what talks to the chip and the PC. Let's put a little bit of flux on each side of the solder. Now I'm going to use my hot air gun to heat the pins and pop this chip off. Now we need to remove the NAND from the second SanDisk USB flash drive. And we're going to put the one with the X on it. The X chips are the ones with the photos. Now I'm just going to check the pins, make sure the solder looks okay. We don't want to create any short circuits. We've got the pins lined up. It's time to heat and re-solder the X chip. 
Now we've got the PNY in for a chip swap. Let's have a look at some of the anatomy here. The same TSOP48 chip. We've got a little circle here, which indicates the first pin. And there's a little white triangle printed in white silk screen on the PCB to help line it up. So it's 64 here. Um, I've removed the sticker. It had a sticker. I just didn't want to heat it up and I wanted to make sure the white paint was visible. Um, also, this one uses a Fison brand controller. I'll put all the details for all the different technology and brands in the description of this video as well. So, a Fison. So, we need to take this chip off and we need to put it on this one. Let's put some flux down. Okay, now we've got our SP, which was the Blaze B30. And one, let's have a look at the Inanabi. One thing I've already noticed is it's got a Fison PS2251. In fact, this looks identical to the Kingston that we just did. No, not the Kingston. Which one did we just do? We did the PNY one. Look at this. This is the PNY USB stick. It's exactly the same. The memory chip that was on it was a different company, different marking, but everything, the PCB is the same. So the PNY and the Kingston, they're the same, but I'll swap it anyway. Now we have the Kingston. The Kingston is labeled as a 64 gig, and let's have a look at the anatomy of it. We got the USB 3 connector, uh, one memory chip on this side. If we flip it over, we can see the USB controller chip, and let's see if I can figure out what that is. It's an IS918. Let's swap the chips. Now we have our MTech brand. Let's have a look at the anatomy. the anatomy. We've got a single chip. And on the other side, we've just got a pretty simple looking controller chip. I don't know what it is. Let's see if I can figure that out. It's called a UP25, but it also... No, UP25. I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to look that up. And I'll, I'll list this in the comments. So we've got one left, and it's our verbatim. And you'll notice here, it's a different type of chip. It's still a memory chip, but it doesn't have pins sticking out the side. So this has actually got a ball grid array underneath. So there's no pins. But we've also got an... That's usually not a problem for a chip swap. I'm used to it. They're out there. Um, I do see them. But here's the other problem. Here's the other verbatim. And it's completely different. This one is a TSOP. Now, even though I got both these USBs from the same shelf exactly in front of each other, they're completely different. Now, the, this one here has got a BGA NAND chip, it's called, so the ball grid array, which are the little balls underneath, they're everywhere underneath. This one's uh, got a Fison chip, so the Fison company, FS2251, 2251-09V. But this one here also has a Fison chip, so they're still using the same chip manufacturer. I'm just trying to see if I can read it with the microscope. It's so uh, small. It's also a Fison PS2251. 2251, is that what I said this was? Yes, PS, this one here is a PS2251, but it's a dash 09V. This one's a PS2251 dash 70 dash 25. And, you know, it kind of looks like the MTEC one. Let's go back to the MTEC. There's our MTEC one that we've already swapped. And you know what? I believe it might be the same thing as the MTech. So even though that's a verbatim and that's an MTech, 
it looks like they're using the same company. That chip's a little bit wider too, a wider chip. So that's not a standard size NAND chip. I can't remember the dimensions. If you can remember, write them in the comments for me. So there's actually, I won't be able to swap this verbatim chip because it's not the same. I mean, uh, technically I, I could. I don't know if this one's got provisions for a BGA. So it would have to have the same BGA footprint underneath. This chip's overhanging, I can't really see, so I am not going to swap this one. The verbatim is, um, it's different. So we've got five now that we've swapped. Let's start plugging them in and see what happens. Okay, so we've got all our USB flash drives with the chips swapped over. And I just wanted to say if you're new to the channel, welcome along. I upload regular data recovery videos. So if you like what I do, uh, follow along. Um, I've had to put the SanDisk one in because it doesn't have a proper connector like these ones do. So I've had to put it back in this plastic shell to get it to connect. So let's plug it in. I'm skeptical this is going to work because I'm just used to dealing with Samsung, uh, correction, SanDisk USB sticks. And I've been dealing with uh, data recovery from USB sticks for over 15 years, and I'm skeptical this will work. I have had it work once before, but things change. Okay, there you go. It's, it's worked. SanDisk. Okay, I called that wasn't going to work. Let's see if our test image and video works. There's our test image. And we've got our test video. Everyone's hero. Unbelievable. So, Sandis, the chip swap has worked. I'm going to safely eject that because we can do some more experiments in the future with it. How do we safely eject? There it is. Impressive. Sandisk for the win. Cool. Okay, we'll put that on the winner side, SanDisk. Next we have the PNY. I'm not putting this back in the plastic shell because waste of time. So let's plug in the PNY. Are you ready for this, guys? 64 gig. Are you ready for this, guys? Okay, nothing from the PNY. Um, we'll come back to the PNY. I don't know what's happening. Maybe I didn't solder something, so we'll check it under the microscope. And we'll check it on an amp meter. Let's go for the Kingston. So I've got the Kingston now. Here's the Kingston. Okay, I wonder if I've killed the USB controller. That is also not working. Let's check that the USB controller is okay. Uh, what is it? Um, no. Oh, it's been a device manager. Make sure there's no problems here. I don't even know where the USB controller is down the bottom here. Everything looks normal there. Okay, nothing working there. It could be working, I'm not sure. Um, okay, well, we got the disconnect sound. Okay, we've got the connected sound. Let's do another rescan. Okay, nothing there. Nothing from the Kingston. We'll also put that in the not detecting pile. Next one is the MTEC. Let's go MTEC. Oh, we've got a flashing LED over here. That's, here we go, and the MTech. This is exciting. Um, let's make sure our test photo works. Yes, it is. Can we open our video? Yes, we can open our video. Well done, MTech. Now, I should say that just because the MTech one is working or the Sandis one is working doesn't mean that that's a universal feature because the technology for these change so often and they're all using different companies that things change all the time so 
This is not a um, scientific proof that MTech or SanDisk is uh, chip swappable. It just happens to work for this one controller, this one piece of technology that was produced at this time. All right, we've got number five, the SP, silicon power. Ready for it. Jeez, the connectors aren't good. And we got an LED flashing, silicon power. Silicon power for the win. And do, there's our video. Working great. And we've got our image. Silicon power, awesome. Let's uh, safely eject this, not that, um, there we go, safely ejected. So let's go back down to the microscope. Let's have another look at these two. Make sure I have wired them correctly, uh, so, sorry, um, soldered them correctly. Um, we'll just check our things out and we'll be back. Okay, I just double checked everything. Basically, I had a look at the soldering of the NAND chips on the microscope. I decided to just clean everything up, the pins. I also applied another uh, flux and, and just tried to re-solder them again. Uh, one pin on the, I think, Kingston looked like it might have been a bit loose. So they've been reflowed with solder, cleaned up. Let's have another crack at it. So Kingston, will you talk to us? And that is a no, still a no. I'll see what it does with an amp meter if there's any activity. Okay, it is definitely got five volts going into the USB and it is drawing current, but let's just rescan. So we're searching and nothing, okay? So let me know in the comments why you think this chip swap didn't work. And also let me know if you want me to make a follow-up video to, to demonstrate why the chip swap didn't work. So let's plug in our, what's, uh, okay, this is the PNY, same thing. And we're getting the same response. So I think all the soldering I did was fine. We're still getting no activity. And we'll just check it on a little amp meter here. You probably won't be able to see what it says on the amp meter, but I'll, I'll tell you what it says. Okay, it's just detecting five volts is going into the USB. And it's got about 50 milliwatts. So we'll do another scan. and nothing. Okay, well, that wraps up this video. Hope to see you guys again soon.